We've had some great athletes from the Northwest suburbs throughout the years, and we're ready to honor four more. Welcome to the 2013 Channel 12 Sports Hall of Fame induction show. I'm John Jacobson. I'm Jay Wilcox. It brings back some great memories to catch up with this year's class, and we'll get started with the man who is now the youngest member of our Hall of Fame. He's without a doubt one of the best swimmers ever from the Northwest suburbs. 2007 Maple Grove graduate Kurt Carlson joins our Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm very honored. You know, I've grown up watching Sports Jam and, you know, Channel 12 Sports and Channel 12 News and everything like that. Um, and truly, it's an honor for me just to be here and, and be selected for this award. Carlson saved his best for last as a member of the Crimson, taking two individual and two relay state titles as a senior. Um, I think my last year and, and my senior year, I won. You know, I was able to win my two individual events, and then our, our two relays actually won two. Um, so that was really cool to have, you know, four championship uh, wins at the, my last championship meet of my high school career and stuff like that. Kurt won the 100 and 200 freestyle at the state meet in his junior and senior seasons. Still, it was the relays and overall team success that interested him most. It's great to do stuff by myself, but knowing that I'm sharing it with a team, um, all throughout high school, all throughout college, it was all about the people I was with, um, the journey, not really the destination, that's kind of what, was what I really looked at in my swimming career. Um, and I accomplished a lot myself, but seeing what I've done with the team and how I affected the team really makes me happy as an athlete and how I affected some younger swimmers too. He's fondly remembered at Maple Grove, and not just for his remarkable talent. He was always having fun, and he made practices fun. Uh, he was always in a great mood when he came into practice, always wanted to be here. And probably the fact he's just, he's a great teammate. Um, he helped out the, the younger kids, always giving them encouragement. Uh, when it came to dual meets, I could put him in any event and I know I would get a good effort. Carlson went on to have a great career at the University of Minnesota where he was a 13-time All-American. I, I know that was one of my challenges to try to get into the double digits and everything else. Um, Growing up watching some of those gopher swimmers and knowing that uh, there was like Terry Sokaitis, Justin Mortimer, David Plummer even, who uh, might be a future Olympian, one of my good friends, so it'd uh, be pretty cool if he can get that. But seeing them as, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20-time All-Americans, it was one of my challenges for myself to try to get up on that board too. So being able to go to Big Tens and NCAAs all four of my years there uh, and swimming against some of the best competition in the world was, was absolutely fantastic to do. Many of Kurt's high school records still stand. His name is everywhere on the Maple Grove record board and around the Northwest Suburban Conference. I think that's really, really cool to, to have out there. And, you know, I still have some, some high school swimmers that, you know, will write on my Facebook or text me once in a while saying, hey, I was at the pool and I saw your name up on the board. It's still up there. And, you know, it, it, I feel a little bit older now, but it's still pretty cool to see and have those younger guys really seeing that and, uh, and still knowing my name, which is pretty cool, too. So. Kurt's performance late in his high school career was even more impressive, considering that he and his family were dealing with his mother Carol's cancer. She died in 2007, and an invitational meet at Maple Grove bears her name. I, I take a lot of pride in that. I know it's right around, you know, Christmas time and, and December and everything like that. Um, I, I think it was probably the fifth or sixth year it went on now. Um, and I know that the team, you know, just we, they really cared about our family, really cared about my mom. You know, she was the one up in the stands that was super loud all the time. And, you know, it, it, I still watch some of those home videos and it, it brings a tear to my eye. And, you know, I know my family is, is really big with their kids and really big with sports. Um, and just knowing that she was there along the way all throughout high school and, you know, she passed away my senior year. Um, but she was able to watch me swim, which was very, very nice. In addition to competing as a gopher, Kurt also swam at the U.S. Olympic trials in 2008. Though he's not exactly an old timer, Kurt's days of competitive swimming are mostly behind him now. I don't get in the pool all the time. I, I'll work out once in a while, but going from uh, college swimming 20, 25 hours a week of competing and swimming and training, um, it's a little bit different swimming just a couple hours a week. It's, it's kind of nice and everything else, uh, but I definitely miss the competitive nature of it, uh, the racing and everything like that. So eventually I'd like to get back in and do some master swimming and, and get to know some of those guys and start racing again. John Kurt is now in retail management at Target in Edina, and he'll get in the pool for an alumni meet at the U of M soon. Yeah, you talked about it in your piece, but you go around to these other pools besides Maple Grove, like you know, Jackson Middle School up in Champlin or Northdale and Coon Rapids. You'll still see his name up on the board, and uh, you know great marks that are still standing 
at this time. Yeah, and a lot of great incentive for the younger swimmers to try and get those, and they, uh, they remember him and they go after those marks, no doubt. There's much more to come on this Channel 12 Sports Hall of Fame special. We have three more new inductees for 2013, including one of the top players and arguably the area's top dynasty, the Wyzetta Girls Soccer Program. Armstrong's Megan Almanzo and Osseo's Kat Crambeer are both members of our 12 Sports Hall of Fame and were each All-State soccer players. Over the past 20 plus years though, no team in the area and probably the state has enjoyed more success than Wyzetta. Here now is the first inductee from that program to enter our hall. King coming up with it again, goes for the far corner, perfect setup for Stephanie Erickson. She was the top player for an emerging prep soccer power from the western suburbs two decades ago. We welcome 1994 Wyzetta High School graduate Stephanie Erickson into the 12 Sports Hall of Fame. Erickson was a freshman in the fall of 1990 when former pro soccer player Tony Pesnicker took over as the team's head coach. Wyzetta went from three wins in 1989 to 15 in 1990 and a state runner-up finish. Chance and a goal! Two nothing Trojan! Steph was the team's leading scorer that season and Wyzetta soccer was on its way. I think I came to the realization that my, my more than four years playing on the varsity team here were some of the best memories of my soccer career. It was just such a special time. Um, I think we started something really cool. The Trojans lost just seven games during Erickson's last three seasons, winning a state championship in 1991. Oh, I'll never forget that game because we didn't know that it was golden goal. And the whole team had rushed the field and we were all like, get off the field, this is, we're gonna get in trouble, this is gonna be a penalty. And I remember Tony was hugging me saying, no, we're done, we did it. Stephanie racked up 66 goals in her last three seasons, 71 for her career. 20 years after her last game in blue and gold, she is still the school's all-time leader in goals, assists, and points. It is great, it's fun, but I'm quick to say, I just think it's so much harder now. So I, I, I see that being a really hard feat for someone who's probably a lot better than I ever was. What she accomplished, you know, it, it stood the test of time and it really showed. And she was a complete player. I mean, she was athletic, but I think what stood her aside from many is she was such a good header of the ball and she scored a lot of goals on heading and we haven't had that kind of consistency in, in a long time. Some of the best players that I've seen in Minnesota soccer were during her era. You can't diminish what they did just because it's a different time and maybe you play a little bit different. They easily could have fit in. The All-State forward earned a soccer scholarship to Northwestern University in Illinois. Her experience with the Wildcats reminded her a lot of her days at Wyzetta. It was another program where we were building something. Uh, my first year, my freshman year, was the first year of the program. So we were starting from scratch, kind of like we did here, with another really good dynamic coach. Stephanie put up big numbers at Northwestern, too. She ranked second in career assists and points. It was a sport that was just exploding when I was in high school and when I was in college. and. Nowadays, it's, it's so much more competitive. There are so many more girls playing. What I did in those years would be very hard to do now. With the encouragement of her college coach, Marsha McDermott, Stephanie herself turned to coaching, enjoying the job, if not the pay. I made very, very little money for a long time. I just kind of popped around until my first full-time job was at Stanford. So everything before that was you know, just getting experience and trying to land a full-time job. After starting at Cal, Stephanie coached three other Division I programs as well. An interim head coach at Stanford, she was the head coach at both Harvard and her alma mater, Northwestern, a program she left two years ago. Living not far from the Northwestern campus with her husband, Chris, and their blended family of three young children, Stephanie Foster is pretty certain her Division I head coaching days are over. It's a really hard job to balance a family. There's a lot of travel, a lot of time. In fact, you're really never off. We're not the kind of coaches who are making 
amazing amounts of money to justify that sacrifice. The turf at Wyzetta Central Middle School was grass 20 years ago when Stephanie Erickson was a 17-year-old in her senior year. The building here was then Wyzetta High School. Standing on the field for the first time since then brings back some great memories for the now 37-year-old former Trojan star. Can you look out and picture certain moments? Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I can look out here and picture certain people. Like I picture Nicole Peterson playing right here and screaming up the sideline and Libby Witchker and Julie Thody and Amy McClinsky in the middle and the, Missy Stuckey in the back and me and Haas up top. I mean, I can... I just picture all their faces. Erickson a shot. She scores. Jay, in that last answer, Stephanie talked about Huss. That's Aaron Hussey, who was an All-State player, went on to play at the University of Minnesota. Is now Aaron Chastain, lives about a mile from Stephanie in suburban Chicago. And Aaron is now the head coach at DePaul University. Nice to see them yeah. staying in soccer. And uh, I remember the the fact that that program came so far so fast mm -hmm. and they were part of it. We take it for granted now that each year they're going to be really good and uh, players like Stephanie were definitely a part of getting that started. One of four freshmen on that first really good team that uh, Tony Pesnicker had and now that tradition continues here 23 plus years later. Well stay with us, there is more to come. Next up, meet our third Hall of Famer for the class of 2013, a volleyball standout who led her team to a state championship. Welcome back to the 2013 Channel 12 Sports Hall of Fame induction show. Our next Hall of Famer led a resurgence for a volleyball program that was dominant in the 1980s and took them back to the top as the new millennium opened. The set to Lovdell, there's a kill. She was a heavy hitter and an all-time great in the Armstrong Volleyball Program. We welcome 2001 graduate Tara Lobdell, now Tara Hansbro, into our Hall of Fame. Very exciting, I think that um, I was talking to my coworkers, and they were saying, what are they here for? And I said, well, I, I was a good volleyball player back in the day. So um, a great honor, nice to be recognized. Lobdell from the three meter line with the kill. Dynamic outside hitter Lobdell earned Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year and first team All-State Honors as a senior as she wrapped up a superb high school career that spanned six seasons. She was just a fierce competitor. Even in practice, if we were doing a drill and there was any competition, her attitude is, I'm not going to lose this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to win. And she, she carried that onto the court when she played matches, too. It was just that, you know, I'll do what it takes attitude. Lobdell with the kill. Lobdell helped Armstrong to the state tournament as a junior. And as a senior, was part of an amazing season. Meisner gets the block at the net. The Falcons didn't lose a match on the way to winning the state title in the fall of 2000, as Lobdell and fellow 12 Sports Hall of Famer Marcy Pinata led the way. Looking back now, what an amazing year that was of going undefeated and winning the state championship. But not many teams get to get to accomplish that. So um, during the process, didn't really seem that it was. Um, a big deal, but looking back, what an awesome group of girls and teammates that we had that year. It was a great group. I came in kind of you know, as a rookie head coach, not knowing what to expect, and Tara was a leader from the beginning. She had some varsity experience, um, wasn't afraid to be kind of a take charge player on the court, and uh, you know that group is will always be special. From Armstrong, Tara accepted a volleyball scholarship to Northern Illinois, where she left her mark in a big way. She was Mid-American Conference Freshman of the Year in 2001 and led the Huskies in kills in all four seasons. She's still second in career kills and owns the single season record for kills as a Husky. Northern Illinois was a great fit for me. I was able to be an impact player right, right away my freshman year. So, um, you know, gaining confidence in um, my high school career of the leadership brought over there I think helped me be successful as well so my freshman year was very successful we made it to the MAC tournament and um, that was probably the highlight. It's been 13 years since Lobdell left Armstrong and what was a golden era for female athletes at the school. Her graduating class had five high-level college athletes. 
It was a special year. I remember that was the year that we had the uh, girls uh, Metro Players of the Year in the three major team sports with her and Calhoun and Becerras. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a special group of athletes right at that time and a lot of success at the school then, too. Still keep in contact with those girls and, you know, it's interesting to learn about their college career and experiences. Um, but I just think, you know, we worked hard. We knew what we wanted to accomplish. Tara coached club volleyball with the Minnesota Freeze program until recently and is still involved with the sport she's loved for a long time. So I uh, stopped coaching last year due to I just had my first son. So uh, they take up a lot of time. So I've been coaching since up until last year and I play with the pinatas on Monday nights um, in a league. So we still uh, hang out and see each other and um, reminisce about the good old days. You know, I just kind of play for fun now. I used to be super competitive and if I lost, you didn't ever want to be in the same room as me. But I think as you grow older, you know, things change and different priorities come to the mix, but still competitive, I love to win. As Tara mentioned, she just had her first child and she's a branch manager of the Arbor Lakes, Wells Fargo and Maple Grove and what a great volleyball player she was. Well, and you think about uh, what that team it was and you, she talked about the great athletes they had at that school during that time, Jay, and it was uh, a terrific time for Armstrong and that 2000 volleyball team was uh, a great one. Yeah, no doubt about that. And we have one more new Hall of Famer for 2013 to recognize. He's part of a vanishing breed of top-tier high school athletes. The three sports stand out. Our final inductee into the 2013 12 Sports Hall of Fame would tell you he wasn't the most talented athlete on any of his high school teams. But he was a kid who did everything well in all of his sports. And what a prep career he enjoyed. A three-sport athlete who helped his teams reach five state tournaments. 2000 Maple Grove High School graduate Caleb Marks is the fifth Crimson athlete inducted into the 12 Sports Hall of Fame. Caleb was in the second graduating class to attend all three years at Maple Grove. Most teams at the new school struggled athletically early, but teamed with a strong class of 1999 ahead of him, Marks and his teammates soon found their feet. A three-year varsity athlete in football, basketball, and baseball, Caleb and the Crimson qualified for the state football playoffs in 1998. Marks to the end zone, and he's there for the touchdown. The state baseball tournament in 98, 99, and 2000. 21st run batted in for Caleb Marks. The state basketball tournament in 2000. Getting to state five times, a big deal. I was always most proud of that, and that feat is a, is a real testament to the teams and the coaches that I've had. Uh, not a lot of uh, uh, students or athletes growing up had access to the same kind of uh, players and coaches that, uh, that I was able to. I certainly didn't fully appreciate it until after it's gone, like so many things. Once you're out in the real world, uh, yeah, it's, and looking back, you think, wow, like, did I really do all that? His high school coaches haven't forgotten Caleb's contributions to those teams, nor his calm demeanor under fire. He was under the pressure uh, in a lot of those uh, different sports, and I think that just carries over. You, you can't replicate that uh, in the off season, and if you got a guy who's been in the mix, you know, been in competitive battles, uh, that that helps. It's hard to find kids that are are willing to sit back and you know do what they need to do to make a team successful. A lot of them want to be in the limelight. And Caleb wasn't that sort of person. He just, the team had to succeed and he felt he was a part of it. Maple Grove has done it. Of his five state tournament teams, Caleb counts the 2000 basketball team as the most special. The reason it was special was we had five seniors on the team. All five seniors started. All five of us had played together for years before we actually uh, got to high school. Some of us have been playing together almost every year since fifth grade. We just knew each other so well. We played together so well. And even though we weren't the most talented team, as the season went on, I think other teams, and even our, especially our coaching staff, said, well, we might have something special here. In football, Marks was a starter at fullback and linebacker, and a key player for a Maple Grove team that reached state for the first time in school history during his junior year. There's a 
it's intercepted by Marks. Once junior year came around, and we were as big and as strong as everybody else, we'd also played together as underclassmen at the varsity level longer than the new than the kids at the, at the other school. Uh, and we took it full advantage of it. We had some really talented teams. And then there was baseball. Goes the other way. Marks carrying toward the line and a nice running catch by Caleb Marks. Where Caleb played on three section championship clubs. I always gave my best effort when I was out there. And I thought that, I thought when coaches looked at me, they, they knew what they were gonna get. Uh, no more, no less. Uh, they could count on me being there, count on me playing my, my hardest. A broken hip early in his sophomore year at the University of Mary in North Dakota ended his football career, but he played four years of varsity baseball there. It was a special time. I enjoyed my college experience thoroughly. It, it certainly was not in the big city, and it was a smaller university. The, the way college baseball works is you get on a bus on Tuesday, you start driving south, and you just play teams along the way, and you turn around, and you play teams coming back, and that group of guys uh, becomes really close. I'm still friends with a lot of those guys. After graduation, Caleb settled in Chicago, working for the firm he interned with in college. I work at a proprietary futures trading firm called Marquette Partners. Uh, I interned there during college, uh, and we trade futures contracts. I'm a senior trader and a limited partner in the firm. I work there with my brothers, and there's about 80 employees in total. Caleb lives downtown with his wife of six years, Jessica, and their daughter, Vivian, who was born last December. They enjoy life in the big city on Lake Michigan, whether it's fishing, sailing, taking in a ball game, or Caleb's pastime as a blues piano player. Caleb Marks remembers his days at Maple Grove not only for the good teams, but for the good times he had with a lot of classmates. We all hung out together, and that group of, of folks, mostly from the class of 2000, was just across all kinds of different deals in, in, in school. I mean, from the garage band to the auto class, to, I mean, everything. Yeah, I always even thought there that the, I doubt this happens very much in high school, but it's certainly happening here, and I think it's a special thing. 14, Caleb Marks. And both Ron Zupfi and, and, and Darby Carlson telling me what a great leader he was on those teams. I've had a lot of good players and good leaders, but he kind of stood out and kind of led the charge. Yeah, I think what he gave some of those teams was a little bit of swagger, too. He was a mm -hmm. confident kid, and in right. a good way, just a great guy to be, uh, have on your team. I think every sport, they all wanted him to be in the mix at the end. And we talked about his uh, brothers working with him. Brent Lawson also works at his firm in Chicago. And he started actually at uh, Benilde St. Margaret's High School, which is where all his brothers went. Went through his freshman year and then wanted to go back with his teammates at Maple Groves. And that's where he finished out the last three years. And it turned out to be a good decision for him in a lot of ways. Well, with that, we bring to close this show. And if you'd like to see extended interviews with all of our new Hall members, you can go to our YouTube channel on our website at 12.tv. And thanks for the time given to us by Kurt and Caleb and Stephanie and Tara. It was great for us to catch up with them. Special thanks also to our terrific editors and production people who helped put this show together. And finally, thanks to you for watching. <laughs>